In this video, I'm going to take a look at how we can draw a straight line graph using NumPy arrays rather than Python lists. The previous video in this playlist looked at this computer program, which drew a straight line graph. And you can see that I used Python lists. Here, I've got an empty list that I filled up using a for loop, and this line plotted the graph. In this video, I'm going to plot the same straight line graph, but I am going to do so not using Python lists, but using NumPy arrays. In this program, you can see that I've removed from this area the plotting of the graph, and instead I've put print x and print y, so we can see what the values of x and y are in the Python lists. So if we consider what happens, this creates a Python list that's populated with 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here we create an empty Python list, and what this will do, it'll go round a loop appending to the empty y list values calculated here. And we will have, when this loop finishes executing, all the values of y for the equation shown here, which, if you refer back to the previous video, you will see is 2x plus 1. So when I now execute these statements, print x and print y, what Python will return, as you can see here, and there is the x list, and this is the y list. And I'll just choose one of the values, this 9 here, we got to the 9 because 4 was used here as 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 1 is 9 to give us 9 here. Each one of these was used in the loop, and this 0 gave us a 1. This 3 here, for example, when you plug it in there, is 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7, and there you can see the 7. The program coming into view now will do exactly the same as the one I've just described, in the sense that it will print out x and y, and you will see that they are identical values to those shown here. But look carefully at the program, and you can see on this line that I'm importing numpy as np. On this line here, I'm creating an instance of a numpy array, and I'm passing in this Python list, which contains the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, so when this line executes, we're going to get a NumPy array that consists of values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What this line will do, it'll use the X array, the NumPy array. So when I use the word array in this video, please remember I'm referring to an example of a NumPy array. What this line will do, it'll take the values that appear in X multiply them by 2 and add 1. So it'll take this 0, here it'll multiply it by 2 to give 0 and add 1 to give 1. So 1 will appear in the y. And the same calculation will be applied to this 1, this 2, this 3 and this 4. So when this executes, y will contain all of the values that this has calculated for all of the values in this array, this numpy array that was defined on this line. So when we come here now and print x and y, what we're going to see is this. And you can see there's the value of x that was created here. And on this output line, you can see we have 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9, because that's what was calculated here. If I just take this example here of 4, which was have been this 4 here when we created the NumPy array, that will have been given to this value of x. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so the 9 goes there. If I was to choose this one, this 2 here, well, it's this 2, as you can see, in the output. And of course, this would have been 2. So this would have been 2 times 2, plus 1 is 5, and you can see there's 5 there. So what you've got here is something that looks math-like. Compare this line to what we have to do in this program. Here we have to create an empty list. 
and then we have to go around the for loop doing this calculation as we go around the loop for differing values of i that are picked up from here. But if you look at this, you can see that this line is more mathematical like than this here, and this is pretty much easier than this one here. This is very programmatic. You have to create an empty list. You then have to define an appropriate for loop. As you go around that loop, you have to do the appropriate calculation. And what importing NumPy has done, it says, no, you can just write this mathematical looking equation down and it'll work out what's in Y for everything that's in X. And everything in X is this lot here. So this is the program responsible for plotting the graph using Python lists. And when this program executes, because we're plotting X and Y, and X and Y in this case are the lists, we're going to get this graph that's appearing now. And you can see it's a straight line graph for Y equals 2X plus 1. Now this is the program that plots the same graph but does so using numpy arrays and what we will see when we plot is the following graph and if you look carefully you can see that's identical to the graph that we've just looked at for the previous program that used python lists. So this is the program we looked at in detail in the previous video and this is the one we're currently looking at in this video that's using numpy arrays. Now both of these programs give the same straight line graph, they both will give this. The difference is however if you look here you just have to import the numpy as mp and on this line you can write out what is in effect a mathematical looking equation and it simply does the calculation for you across the entire array it just does it in block and this is called broadcasting across the entire array now i'm going to extract the lines from the program that i'm really interested in and those lines are shown here and you can see this creates the numpy array that's going to have the value 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 stored in it. And this line will calculate all the values that are going to go into Y. And I'm going to home in on that by making it bigger. And you can see, as I've already said, it's very mathematical looking, which is good because numpy comes from numerical Python. So it's to deal with numbers. And that's its design. It's to, to deal with numbers and make it easier to deal with numbers. So, for example, I know I haven't got to write a for loop for this as a programmer. You tend to think, well, I better have a loop going around here to do this. But not with NumPy. You can just write it out in this kind of format, in this mathematical look. But what else do I get? Well, when we consider this, we can say that the calculation is broadcast across the entire NumPy array. So this calculation is done for each of these values in turn without the need for me to make a for loop. What else can we get if we use NumPy? Well, what we get is the advantage of not having to create an empty array in the first instance. There is no need for us to do that because you can just write effectively the equation down as you see here. So there's no need for a for loop. So clearly, this is easier. It's slightly more sophisticated when you're going to be doing mathematical type things. So here's the program again for us to consider. And what you need to remember is when you want to use this approach, you have to make sure that you import NumPy as NP, as you can see here. And then, of course, we can simply use this mathematical looking equation. Now, if I put this to one side and we consider this in some detail, what's going on here? Well, the truth of the matter is, although as a computer programmer, I haven't got to worry about a for loop, rest assured that under the bonnet of NumPy, a looping mechanism is there. NumPy will put in place the necessary looping structure to go to each item within the array in turn. And you don't have to worry about it, it's just done for you. But the good thing is not only just done for you, it's done so using pre-compiled C code. Now what does this mean? Well, let's remind you of Python and its interpreted nature. You write a Python program and what happens, it takes one of your program statements, converts that into the language of the machine, 
machine code, runs that, goes back to your program, takes the next line that you've typed in, converts that to machine code and runs that. That's essentially what interpretation of your code means. And it's pretty slow, relatively speaking. But also what you have to bear in mind, when you are using Python and using Python lists, you're creating objects from classes. So you will have an object reference pointing to the instance of the class. And there's lots of object references and instances floating about that Python has to take care of. And all of that gives a degree of overhead. And when you use NumPy, because of the way in which it works, it doesn't have all of that overhead associated with Python code, if you like the core language of Python. When your program that uses NumPy decides to implement an equation like this, it goes to pre-compiled C code, which is essentially machine code, and says to the machine code, look, will you work on this equation, please? And it does. There's no need to compile a line, execute it, compile another line, execute it. It's already done in advance. And because it's already done in advance, is there ready sitting and waiting to execute things like this, it's quicker. Now, it's quicker because pre-compiled code executes much faster than Python. So what we have is when you use NumPy, is somebody's done all the hard work of making it execute quicker because they have got all of this pre-compiled C code, which is really another name for the language of the machine. So with C, it doesn't take a statement, compile it, execute it, next statement, compile it, execute it. What C will do, it'll take the entire program and convert it all to machine code, and then it runs that machine code. And that's what happens when you use NumPy in Python it's got a block of machine code there that it uses to execute program statements like this. And because it's pre-compiled, it executes much faster. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.